when I'm feeling really inspired to quilt, um, sometimes I really, I have to go make it right away. Um, so usually I'll be at work doing actual work and I will see a really neat color combination and then the idea just pops into my head and then I basically just wait until five o'clock and then I go home and I just get started. Um, and because I'm afraid I'm gonna lose the idea if I don't, or I will sketch the idea if I know I can't get to my studio right away. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty impulsive that way, but I feel like a lot of us, a lot of other artists are, they kind of do the same thing. So um, everybody, my family just knows if I get home and I go straight out to the garage, like, oh, she's got an idea. So, and they just let me be. I listen to music constantly. That's my life. That's how I work. I always have to have that going on, whether I'm streaming from a playlist or um, I have a lot of records that I like to listen to over and over and over. Um, I play guitar. I kind of, I, this is kind of my sanctuary, even if I'm not sewing. Sometimes I will come out here um, and just like sit or I will organize my fabric or whatever. It's just, it's, this is my space. I am Kelly McCleary, and I am a quilter from Monticello, Illinois. I've always appreciated the arts. Um, as a kid, I've always grown up around it. So my dad was a carpenter and he was always working with his hands and even when he was at home he would be making things like he made me a dollhouse and he made other things so I would like I like to really like sit and watch him um, my mom was an artist um, she really liked to paint and draw and so when I was a little kid and I was at home with her probably you know two three four she started taking some art classes and then she'd be at home working on whatever project she had and I thought it was super cool so I started drawing, and what do you draw? You draw horses. That's, that was my thing. So I drew horses with 10 foot long hair, with 10 feet, um, with like a girl riding them that was like 10 feet tall, things like that. Um, when I was a little bit older, I drew a cartoon because I really liked Ren and Stimpy. So I drew a cartoon and I wrote a really long letter, and it was like my pitch to Nickelodeon. And I gave it to my dad to mail it, and he didn't, <laughs> but I didn't know that. So he just kept it instead, forgot about it, and then all these years later I got like a folder of stuff that he had kept, and it was in there. And it's just like hilarious to read something that a, you know, 10 or 11 year old kid wrote. To, and it was just like, I go to school, and these are the nerds that are in my class, and here's the story about this dog, and here's a squirrel, and here, I mean, it was just crazy, crazy stuff. And so my, my whole life has been all about art and music, and when I get an idea, I gotta do it right away. I actually did not sew at all until I was about 23 or 24 and I was moving into this house that we're in right now and our windows are a really weird size and I needed curtains. So my mom sews and I got a really quick crash course in sewing so that I could make my own curtains. So um, I didn't really sew very much. I sewed if I needed to make something. Like if you need it, you make it. That's kind of how I roll. Um, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I really wanted a certain kind of bedding and I couldn't find what I wanted, so if you need it, you make it. And I found all the fabric I wanted, and I thought, I'm, I'm gonna make a quilt, I'm gonna do this. So I did, so I did it, um, and it was super, super fun. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, and it was, it was really like kind of a hobby type thing for a long time. And then in the past, like, I'd say five years, it's really turned into like a full-blown, this is my life. This is what I'm doing, so. So a lot of people use patterns. Um, I don't do that. I don't, I don't like measuring. I don't like mathing. Um, I really, I improv, I mostly improv. Um, sometimes I might wanna do like 
a star or something like that. And if that's the case, I'll look at a picture of a star quilt that somebody made and then I just kind of figure it out. I don't like, to me, like patterns are sort of a waste of time for me. So I really, a lot of what I do is really impulsive and it's a lot of improv. Um, usually when I start, it's I'm inspired by a certain color combination that I've seen out in the world, outside somewhere, or maybe somebody was wearing a super cool outfit at work and I thought like, oh man, those colors are really neat together. Um, so it usually starts with color or print and then I just kind of go from there. So how I set up is basically I make sure I get my fabric all together. I do like a fabric pull. Sometimes it involves me ordering stuff. I mostly order my fabric from uh, the internet or I, I pull from what I have. I put it all out, I lay it out, I make sure that I like how everything's gonna look. I kind of think about it for a little while. And then really I just start cutting and I just start sewing and whatever happens, happens. How I know that a piece is finished or not is usually when I start, I kind of know, okay, I have enough fabric here to make a throw size quilt, or I have, a, I want to make a small quilt, or I want to make a wall hanging. So I usually have that kind of figured out before I start. Um, but I have had instances where it was like, wow, you know, this would be really cool if somebody could throw this across their couch. So maybe it needs to be a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. So it kind of, I kind of go by size, really. Shibori is an ancient Japanese method of dyeing garments or dyeing um, textile. So you use natural indigo, that's your dye, traditionally. Um, and what you do is you basically, you pleat or you bind or you fold the fabric in a certain way so that the dye only touches the areas of the fabric that you want. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit like tie-dye, but I like to call it fancy tie-dye because you're, you are controlling the pattern. So um, it's, it's super fun. It's another one of those things that I really love and it's really therapeutic. And that's why my hands are always jacked up because they have dye all over them. But that's, that's what I do. One of the very favorite things I've ever made um, was actually a project for a friend. Um, and her name is Laura Jope. She has a business called Same Street Studio. She does amazing block prints on fabric. Everything she does is, is awesome. And she came to me and said, hey, I have a lot of scraps and I'm wondering if you can make a couple of quilts for my sons for Christmas. So I said, yeah, just, just bring me what you've got. So she brought me most of the scraps that she had. I think it was like two big bags. And I just did the improv quilting on both of them. And just that combination of her prints and my my quilting, just, I loved it. They, they both turned out really neat. So that was probably my favorite. And then I did another one that was, um, it was hand dyed with indigo. I do that too. And um, it was a giant, giant star. So instead of like the traditional quilt where you see a bunch of like small Texas star blocks, the whole quilt was a star. So the star itself was like white with a little bit of indigo. The outside of it was like dark indigo. And then the back was bright yellow. And I had dyed that too. And um, I had used um, a shibori method to make these big circles in the middle of it. So that was one of my other favorite ones. And I don't, I don't have it anymore. Somebody bought it. But that one was super cool. I cried a little bit when they walked away with it, to be honest with you. I do have favorite color combinations. Um, my favorite is probably indigo and yellow. I just love it. I don't know what it is about it. Um, you get that bright pop of yellow against the blue and I, I love it. I wear that pretty often. Um, a lot of it is uh, in my decor in my house. A lot of it you will see in my quilts. Um, other color combinations, I really like um, bright, like saturated colors. Um, so one of the quilts I'm gonna be working on soon is gonna be like fuchsia, orange, navy, um, and just complete 
improv all over the place. So um, I really, really like dark, bright colors. I'm not a big fan of pastels. And then another thing that really inspires me is the actual print itself. So if I see a print like llamas, I'll think, wow, this is really cool and really weird. I'm gonna make a pot holder out of it because no one's gonna expect that. So um, I really like bizarre prints that you probably wouldn't normally buy for things around your house or whatever to kind of make things fun. I do a lot of local markets. I try to get out to um, different pop-ups and things that my friends might be holding. Um, Urbana does a lot of uh, artist markets and things like downtown get down um, I also try to travel around a little bit so I've been trying to go to Chicago a little bit more which has been really successful um, I've got some fans up there Bloomington normal is another one um, they've got a really great art community over there and they really are thriving and they appreciate all kinds of different art um, another one is um, I'm gonna try and start going near St. Louis too, but I haven't quite worked that out yet. So um, the markets are really interesting. The, I, I get to meet all kinds of people. It's a really good people watching experience. Um, and also it's really cool when people come in and they tell me stories about like um, my grandma quilted and, and I remember just watching her hand quilting at the couch, watching the prices right or whatever. Um, and also, what I love even more is when I see people my age that come in and they're like, oh, I'm a quilter too. And they have a sewing machine tattoo like I do, or they have like, and that always makes me really excited because then it, I don't feel like I'm on an island. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm young and I'm doing this and I'm doing it differently. And it's so nice to meet other people that do that too, so. I do not dye with other natural dyes yet. I've, I've been kind of researching it a little bit. There are a few different things you can do. You can dye with rust. I've dyed a few things with rust, but it kind of changes the composition of the fabric and it makes it delicate to work with, believe it or not. Um, you can also take flowers and you can roll them up. And it's called echo dyeing and they kind of like the imprint of the flower goes into the fabric permanently. Um, things like that I really want to start trying to work on, but it's just like on my long list of things that sound cool, but I don't know if I'll get to them or not. My website is quirkyquilterist.com. You can also find me on Instagram at quirkyquilterist. You can find me on Facebook as The Quirky Quilterist. Um, and I post pretty regularly. I post pictures of what I'm working on, um, weird random things that are going on in my life if you care. Um, and then also, uh, obviously on my website is where you can shop for things that I make.